Hi to us, and I said in a recent video that uh, I would make a video on how to complete the two consecutive rolls as required by the BMFA B test. Uh, but before I do that, we need to do a video on adverse yaw uh, because only by understanding adverse yaw, amongst other things, will help you make those uh, two consecutive rolls. So, uh, adverse yaw is going to affect all aircraft all the way through to precision aerobatics, right from the very first uh, trainer planes that people fly. Uh, through scale, gliders, biplanes, etc. And some people, when they're being taught to fly to start with, are told don't bother to use the, uh, the rudder that uh, lots of manufacturers put on at great expense. It's not really required. Just use aileron and elevator to make the uh, aircraft fly. Um, they're trying to be helpful, but in fact, uh, overcomplicate things because what happens when we want to turn the aircraft to the right? Well, in an ideal world, the right being this way in this case, in an ideal world, as we roll on the bank, the nose would come round to the right and the aircraft would make a lovely smooth turn uh, or to the left. But uh, that doesn't happen. So what actually happens is as the aircraft initially starts to roll to the right, the nose naturally wants to go to the left. And that's to a greater or lesser extent which we'll see later on in the video. And of course, as we roll to the left, it naturally wants to go to the right. So let's have a look at that uh, in a full-size airplane and see what that looks like on a little bit. So, adverse yaw, listen, I'm on the controls, you stay there too. Okay, your controls. Adverse yaw, but you, you're on the controls. Yes. I'm gonna hold a rudder, left aileron, nose goes right, right aileron, nose goes left. Right. So we've seen our first year, uh, we need to know a couple of things that causes it. And uh, some uh, videos which are going around really only talk about one function that causes adverse yaw, and that is uh, an increase in induced drag. What is induced drag, lift induced drag? Well, as the aircraft flies, uh, we get a buildup of pressure underneath the wing and a reduction in pressure above the wing due to the velocity required and so we, the air really wants to go from the high pressure to the low pressure side so at the tip we have this air turning over which causes a spiral and that spiral causes drag therefore drag is induced by the lift lift induced drag induced drag when we look at uh, adverse yaw we obviously lower this right hand aileron to raise the wing Obviously the pressure is going to increase underneath the wing, it's going to reduce on the top of the wing a little bit more. That's going to cause a more uh, uh, vicious uh, spiral and so therefore the induced drag is going to increase and you would hope it would decrease on the low side to balance things out. And that is true, it definitely does that. But, uh, uh, so some people may say, well, all we need to do then is as we roll the aircraft to the left, is feed in a bit of automatic left-hand rudder. That would be great, solve the problem, here we go. But what happens if we suddenly start to slow the aircraft down? Well, as we slow the aircraft down and make the same input, we actually get more induced drag. So we have a further effect and the adverse yaw is greater at lower speeds. Um, that's because induced drag is greatest at low speeds and reduces to a very, very high speed. If you can imagine this aircraft doing Mach 1, there isn't going to be much time for the air to go from the low pressure to the high pressure, so the induced drag goes to about zero. Uh, let's have a look at that in a, another video. Because that's a good speed. Now if I give it aileron, my adverse shot is much more pronounced. Really significant, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So here it's going to require more rudder. Like if I wanted to, to counter this, it takes significant rudder to stop adverse yaw. Okay, so we also now understand the induced drag effect uh, creates an adverse yaw, but let's have another slightly closer look at this plane in particular with a fully symmetrical wing section, mid-mounted wing, uh, as we look, as that aileron goes down, that aileron goes up. If it's fully symmetrical, you would imagine the thrust and the drag going that way would equal the thrust and the drag going that way. And so the aircraft would do a beautiful axle roll. Uh, but it doesn't, it wants to uh, yaw adversely. 
Take something like a pit special, which has a, a fully symmetrical wing section, uh, suffers dreadfully from adverse yaw, and so the pit special has uh, things called freeze ailerons and aileron differential to try and overcome this. So there must be something else apart from purely the induced airflow increasing. And there is. Uh, so basically, we've always considered so far the wind and the airflow going pretty much straight at the aircraft as it's flying. But of course, as it starts to make this roll in motion, instead of the air purely coming from it in a straight line, this wing, the air is in effect coming a relative airflow from above, and this wing, we in effect have a relative airflow from below. So, Let's have a quick look at relative airflow with my uh, very, very simple diagram here. So the relative airflow going like this, lift is always 90 degrees to the relative airflow and drag is always 90 degrees or parallel to the relative airflow. So let's see what happens if this wing goes up. Well, the wing is going up, so therefore the relative airflow isn't coming from this direction, it's coming from this direction. So now, although the aircraft is flying that way, due to the roll, we can see that the lift vector is actually going backwards, supplementing the drag. So that's going to increase the drag on that upward going wing. What about on the downward going wing on this side? Well, the relative airflow is going to be coming from below the aircraft. At this point, the lift is way ahead and even though we have some drag, we have a vector going that way. So if we look at it, as we make the roll, this wing has lift going in effect backwards, and that has lift in effect going forwards, causing adverse yaw. So even an aircraft which is designed for aerobatics which is going to be flowing with possibly a fully symmetrical wing will have an effect to a certain extent of adverse yaw. And we can see that quite nicely in a diagram. So in this diagram, you can see that we are doing the roll to the right. So the right aileron is up, the left aileron is down. And as I explained earlier, we've got the relative airflow on the left wing uh, from above the wing and on the right wing from below the wing. Uh, the diagram just talks about an aft or forward lift component, which is a little simplistic because obviously um, this aircraft, this wing will have a little bit more induced drag. So there is the lift component, but there would also be a drag component and therefore the resultant would be a further, what I would call an aft thrust on the left wing. And this wing uh, going down will have drag, but it will have a smaller amount of drag. And so we will still see a forward component on the right wing. Uh, so that just looks at the two wings together at the same time. Okay, so we now know that uh, adverse yaw is caused by uh, a combination of uh, increase in induced drag and also uh, due to the rolling motion and the relative airflow. Uh, so what can we do to overcome it? Well, obviously somebody did suggest that we could just uh, add a little bit of rudder as we roll on the bank, but we decided that's not a great idea because it depends on what airspeed that we're flying at, as how much it affects, how much rudder we need to put. And if we've got a mix that's putting the rudder in, that's probably just going to overcomplicate stuff. So there's two normal ways uh, which we spoke about briefly. One is aileron differential. And so if we are rolling the aircraft to the left there, then the upward aileron goes slightly further than the downward aileron. This increases the parasite drag on the upgoing aileron and of course reduces the induced drag on the downward going aileron helps to increase the induced drag as well on the upgoing aileron and so that helps to prevent the aircraft doing this adverse yaw. Um, something, what about something like the, uh, the pit special then? Uh, that has um, aileron differential and also something called freeze ailerons. Freeze ailerons are quite simple. As the aileron goes up, a little bit of the aileron sticks down into the airflow coming underneath the wing and so that helps to create drag 
Um, so a pit special has freeze ailerons and aileron differential. Why does it need all that aileron differential and freeze ailerons if it's got a fully symmetrical wing and it's not that big? It's because of the roll rate. So the pit special has a roll rate of around 300, sometimes more depending on the model, 300 degrees per second. And so you can imagine that if it's doing 300 degrees per second, the vector for this uh, relative airflow is very, very sharp compared to the wing. So you get lots of thrust going forward and on the other wing you get lots of uh, lift as well as drag going back. So you get more, more um, uh, effect of adverse yaw. If we take something like this, how about a, uh, this is a crack mini pits. So uh, very uh, profile model. Uh, you would think that isn't going to suffer too much from adverse yaw, but if we look at the, uh, the aileron movement on it, we can see that uh, it's pretty substantial. The model anyway is 120 grams anyway, so the roll rate on this is just uh, astonishing. Uh, it's probably up uh, 720 degrees per second, perhaps even more, and it's flying very slowly. So when I'm doing rolls, rapid rolls with this, yes, it suffers from um, adverse yaw as well. So, uh, so there we go. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about adverse yaw, how it affects us. It's going to affect all aircraft uh, to a certain or a lesser extent, depending on the design of them. And uh, we will see it in the, uh, the next video, which I'm going to do, which is on uh, uh, rolls and uh, consecutive rolls for things like the B-Test. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one soon.